That's probably the quickest I've done the 100 meters. I know what you're thinking. Leighton's at the running track in January. New year, new me. Nah, 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 nah. I'm just here to test the range of a new product, a wireless video transmission system, I think they're calling it. But I've got the Vaxxis Storm 500 foot plus. Q throw in. Ooh. So this is the newest product in their lineup and it was available in the group buy in about November 2017 and it's now January, hence the big coat and hat. And I jumped straight on it from a lot of great feedback from people on forums. I think one of their products was available on the Red User Forum a while ago and then it created a good buzz about the company. And I've been hearing great things so I thought, hey, let's jump on the bandwagon. So here is the Vaxxis Storm 500 foot plus. First off, the unit comes in a hard case, which is also watertight, and has got these holes cut out for all the different bits and bobs, and this is the receiver. It's a solid bit of kit, quarter 20 inch holes on the bottom, then you've got power SDI and HDMI in, and the Sony MP970 battery plate on the back, and then on the receiver, which is a bigger unit, on the front you've got the screen, and lots of quarter 20 inch holes on the bottom. I've got the V-Lock version and it's got some D-tap outs and then your power in, on off switch, HDMI, SDI and USB. And I think that's for updating. It's not actually for powering it. Then got like a little nogaram for mounting the transmitter on the camera, some sword antennas which can be 360 degree rotated no damage there. I've added a HDMI cable into my kit, as it didn't come with one. Um, you've got DTAP power for each of the units, and then it comes with a SDI cable. And a spare sword antenna. I think I lost mine. And then it comes with this manual, which um, is all in Chinese, so I cannot use that. So I've got a Sony MP970 battery here, popping it in, turning it on, and then it powers up the OLED display on the unit. And on the front you've got some signals there for battery, uh, wireless strength, whether it's receiving video. As you can see there, I just click the buttons and it's either up channel or down channel. And then screwing the sword antennas in and that unit is pretty much ready to go. Uh, without the battery and just powering it from the D-tap, it actually becomes a much smaller profile unit. So if you're using something like an Alexa or a RED camera, you can just power this straight off the D-tap on the battery, or if you've got some kind of distribution box, then you can just power it from that. Same with the receiver. Powered it up, boom, on comes the display. And again, this is simple, using the buttons to change the channel, get the two working together. And the transmitter can send the signal up to 10 receivers, or less than 10 receivers. Full information on the website. But yeah, uh, just demonstrating that you can also power it from the V-Lock, but it does make the unit a lot bigger. Let's get rid of everything, chuck it back in the box. Boom, 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 boom. And it's all nice and snug. And even when you add little bits to it, there's still enough space. Now, as an addition, I also got the director's monitor cage for the Shogun, which comes with these funky skull handles. It's, and they're really quite grippy. So it's a monitor cage and it comes with a V-Lock plate on the back to power the Shogun and a mounting point for the receiver unit. So one thing it doesn't come with is this hex key. I don't know the size of it, um, but to adjust where the screen sits, how far it sits forward and backwards, you need that little hex key. So, with the V-Lock plate on the back, this unit is actually a bit too big. It won't fit on. So you can see that there's not enough clearance there. So you have to swivel it round 
which isn't a big problem. They're probably trying to keep the unit quite small so they haven't stuck out that mounting plate. But then when you look at putting a V-lock on the back, it actually does thicken the back out. So they could have sat that mounting point a bit further out. So here I'm attaching all the cables to the receiver unit before screwing it all in because it gets a bit fiddly trying to cable in once it's all locked into position. The SDI cable that they do supply is right angled, which is really necessary for this. So you can see that I'm screwing it in to the far left of the back of the unit to give me clearance on the right side. And this is so that I can still access the buttons once it's all screwed in and locked in tight. And there you can see I've still got access to the green buttons. And then that's the unit set up for your director or whoever wants to pose with the monitor. So here we have the director's cage, monitor, and the receiver all set up, being powered off this V-lock. I'm going to invite Rob in just to take a closer look. Now we've seen the build in the studio, but this is how it looks on location. A uh, bit messy with the wires, but I could probably tidy that up. On the Vaxis website and the instructions says you get over 500 foot, which is about 180 meters. Oh shit, I gotta check that. It says maximum transmission distance would be 180 meters. Okay, so we're on this running track. The 100 meter starts here. We should easily be able to get to the top and I might even go for a wander in the car park. Let's test this 100 meters, but uh, I'm feeling a bit lazy, so I'm gonna uh, power on me hoverboard and get going. Keep up, Rob. <laughs> Still working. This is, this is how all directors should. Uh, yeah, this is how every director should be rocking up to set on the little swagway, swagway as I like to call it. Director's monitor cage in the back system. Looked like an absolute baller. Anyway, uh, just about to hit the 100 meters. And boom, 100 meters. Still pretty good. It's got a good image there. Okay, let's spin this round. This is really lazy, isn't it? Like, just hoverboarding around a sports track. Hope no athletes are uh, watching. Okay, so still got a good picture. We've got to be at least 150 meters away now. Them skills. Skills paying bills. Skills getting YouTube money. Holla. Like, subscribe. <laughs> That's a long way away. I can't think of any like situation where I would be in personally where I'd need this distance. And still a pretty clear image. Maybe if you really didn't want the client with you, because they're always a pain on set, you could like shift them into the building while you're like filming 150 meters away. Okay, so we're going even further now. Okay, so we're starting to get a bit of a blocky image now. We've got to be near 200 meters. So, even further. If we look at the interference here, we've got a bit of metal and concrete in the way. But still, I mean, I can see that image. I wonder if my radio mic's still working. Christ, you're gonna be in the car park in a minute. Okay, it's getting really blocky now. Oh, we just lost picture. Oh, it's back. I'm trying to keep line of sight. <laughs> I mean, it's a, it's a bit blocky now. So yeah, that, that's dropped out now. We're probably about 200 meters away and there's quite a bit of interference. I can only see myself using it at around a hundred foot, so this is definitely going to work for me. So I'm having a bit of trouble relinking. I hope silver. Connect. So about fifty meters away now. So it's not relinking. There we go. Okay, so we finally got picture back. All we needed to do was do the old classic, turning it off and on again.
Okay, so final thoughts on the Vaxis Storm 500 foot plus. It's exceeded expectations with the distance that it transmits. We got right the way to the back of this facility and as you can see from the drone footage, that's a long way. We were just rocking off what we used to learn in scouts and fingers in the air, distance, angle of the sun and that kind of thing. What was it, about 100 and, 100 and something? So, 107? Something like that, yeah. I'm extremely satisfied with the image from it. It is crystal clear, very sharp. I'm just gonna roll on the monitor so you can see that you can record on here and probably get away with it within a short distance. It does tend to get a bit blocky the further you go, but I suppose that's to be expected with any wireless system. But within a small range, I think it's good enough to pull focus off. Um, that would come down to the monitor as well, but the image that I'm seeing here is just as good as if I'd cabled in. So I paid about $1,900 for this product. And if you look at other competitors in the market, they're offering similar products for about twice the price. And they don't come with all those features. So I think bang for your buck, this is a really good product. It's the entry level product from Vaxis, but for myself, small crews, ACs. I think it's a very professional product that would sit among the best in the class. Now I'm gonna get in shape. <laughs> you can just, you can just cut to be not in shape. Okay. <laughs>